Hi, my name is Joanne St. John and I'm an Outdoor Education Centre staff and you'll be meeting several of the other instructors throughout this winter season. We'd like to acknowledge that the videos that we're taking are made on unceded and unsurrendered Algonquin territory. We'd like to thank the Algonquin Nation for hosting us on this land. The OCDSB Outdoor Education Centres consists of two centres, one in the west, the Bill Mason Centre. It's about uh, 77 acres of wetland and forests and fields that we will explore with our students. And in the east end, mixed skimming, that's about 425 acres. And we also have various habitats that we would go out into the forest and explore with our students. And because during this time you can't join us at the centres, we would like to bring the centres to you. So some of our winter videos will take you out into the forest and, and you can explore what's happening in the natural world uh, from where you are. Hi, I'm David. I am one of the Outdoor Education Centre staff. Uh, most of the time I'm out at McSkimming, but I'm here today at the Bill Mason Center exploring and introducing you to a series of winter modules that, that we're, we have in the works right now to help connect you with this place while you can't do it in person. I feel very fortunate to live here in Ottawa. I, I love being in the, in the northeastern part of North America uh, and one of the reasons is, is what we're surrounded with now snow and the fact that we have the changing seasons and maybe you've maybe you're new to Canada and this is the first time you've experienced snow or you've known nothing else right just take it for granted that we're gonna have the snow in the winter and the Sun in the summer um, but have you stopped to think about why that is like why why is it colder why is it getting dark by five o'clock now um, and why are we having to wear these clothes? It really starts with understanding what's happening on the earth right now as a whole and the reason that it's colder here in Ottawa. It's pretty simple too and you can do it with me here. So if you stand up straight and tall, no, get, you have to get out of your seat, yep. Stand up straight and tall and then tilt yourself just like, like that, right? And that, that's really, that's the reason. So if you imagine that you're the earth turning around like so, then we're, the earth isn't perfectly straight up and down as it, as it moves around the sun right there. It's tilted on its axis. And in the summertime, we're tilted a little bit more toward the sun. We get more of the sun's rays and more direct rays. In the wintertime, we're tilted a bit further away. So it's less direct rays and, and we don't have them for as long. So that sunlight energy doesn't have the opportunity to really heat up this part of the world like it can other parts. Right? And that changes depending where you are on the earth. Um, uh, pretty cool thing, right? Because people who live in the equator, they don't get to experience this, this change that we have. Almost every day is the same, same length, same kind of, of weather, really. As we go through these seasonal changes, um, we, we have to cope with them, right? So those people at the equator, they might not have these wonderful changes, but they pretty much know what every day is going to be like. Here we can be blasted by a winter ice storm. It could be minus 40 degrees out and we have to be able to deal with those things. We have to adapt to those changing conditions. And here at the centers, a lot of our focus is on better understanding not only how we adapt to them, but how all life here in the natural world adapts to them. So how the birds are dealing with that, um, and the animals, uh, the, how they have evolved uh, and, and changed over time to be able to either survive here or to understand why they had to leave, right? Or what other ways they're using to, to cope with this changing seasons. One of the things that we're going to spend some time on in the next few weeks is looking at some specific adaptations that animals and plants have. I mean, animals have the benefit of being able to move. Look at all these plants around us right here. They're stuck, right? If, if they don't have what it takes to survive them, they won't even last a season here uh, in Ottawa. Hi there, my name's Lindsay and I am one of the instructors at the Outdoor Education Centers, but I mostly spend my time at the Bill Mason Center in the west end of Ottawa, um, which is where we are today. 
and I uh, have been making a lot of observations as we've had snow falling here in the winter. There's a lot of really cool um, opportunities for us to be able to observe different things going on in the natural world around us. Um, you can make a lot of these observations even from a window inside your house, uh, from the school window, um, or even just right outside your front doorstep. Um, but today I have been noticing a lot of different uh, things going on in the forest here. Um, there may not be many animals around while we're out here, um, but I can see signs all over the place of them being here in this forest. So one, of, uh, one example is that is some of the tracks that are out here imprinted in the snow throughout the forest, and we'll show you those shortly. Um, but I also like to make sure that I'm recording some of these observations over time and I continue learning about them. So one way I do that uh, is with my camera while I'm out in the forest. I love to take photos of different things that I'm seeing. Another way that I like to keep track of my observations while I'm outdoors or even just watching birds from my window is with a nature journal. So um, you can use any type of notebook just to record the things that you're seeing. Uh, maybe you want to keep track of the temperatures during the day, uh, the weather, um, and I also like to make a record of the animals that I've seen or the animal evidence that I've seen. Maybe I'll even notice something that I'm not too sure about. I'll try to describe it in my journal and then I can go back home later, get some field guides out or uh, go onto the computer and try to find answers to questions that I have. Um, about the natural world and things that I'm seeing outside. So here in front of me, you might be able to see some slight imprints in the snow. Uh, these are tracks that are definitely not like my tracks. Uh, they are animal tracks through the snow um, and I believe they are fisher tracks based on uh, some of my guiding books that I've been looking at. So I'm going to follow these into the forest and uh, I'm probably also going to record this into my nature journal. Um, but I, another way that we try to kind of keep track of what animals have been in the forest, who's been here, uh, is with this field camera. Um, so this camera works at any time of the day. It even can take images and videos at nighttime. And so at both of our centers, we often have one of these set up so that we can get evidence of animals being here on site um, at all times throughout the day and the year. One thing I've learned as I have been setting up this camera is that um, if I follow the tracks or areas where there's a lot of tracks, so you'll, I kind of call them animal highways, so you'll notice a lot of tracks in one area. Um, that's a really good spot to set this camera up and I have a good chance of catching something on camera. Now I have a goal of trying to catch this fisher on the camera so we know that it's here. So I'm going to follow this set of tracks into a spot uh, where we'll set up the camera and we'll see what we can find in the coming weeks when we check the camera memory card. So follow me as I follow the tracks in this direction. I think this looks like a good spot. So now I have the field camera set up. Uh, it's attached to the tree by this strap here, and it's, uh, it's able to be outside in all different types of weather and temperatures. And as I mentioned before, uh, as soon as it detects motion, so something that's moving within uh, a, pretty, a pretty close distance of the camera, the camera will turn on and we'll be able to capture images of whatever animal or even humans that are walking past this camera. Uh, and I think this is a really good spot here. We have a good chance of capturing something because there is a bit of an animal highway. And what I've learned is that sometimes animals tend to use the same pathway over and over, especially in the winter when the snow gets deep, they kind of take the path of least resistance. They usually like to be on pathways that already have the snow packed down a little bit. So we'll see what we can find in the coming weeks on this camera. Hi, my name is Christine and I'm one of the instructors at the Ottawa Carleton District School Board's Outdoor Education Centres. I'm here in the forest today 
hoping to get a chance to see some birds that are out here in the forest. Chickadee dee dee dee. Did you see that? There was a bird just on my hand. So, so cool. These little guys are chickadees and they stay around all winter long. So feeding them something like seeds that's high in protein is really good to help them survive the long cold nights. Are there birds that you maybe notice in the spring and summer that you don't see right now? What about Canada geese, those loud honking ones? Have you heard them lately? Why not? Where have they gone? What do birds do to survive in the winter time? If they don't stick around and look for seeds from humans, sometimes they fly away. Somewhere warmer. Wouldn't you like to go somewhere warm right now? <laughs> no, I like the winter too. Because we have some birds that stick around. But what is that called when they leave? Do you know? It starts with an M. Migration, that's right, you got it. Some birds migrate in the winter time. They fly somewhere warm because they can't keep warm and find enough food here in the winter time by themselves. Some birds that do stay have other adaptations to help keep themselves warm. They sometimes will flock together and huddle and live underneath the branch of evergreen trees because that protects them from snow that might fall. Can you think of other ways that animals try to stay warm in the winter? What about birds? Can you think of ways that birds stay warm and can survive here in the winter besides humans feeding them? What ideas do you have about animals and how they survive in winter? Between now and March break, we'll be putting out uh, three winter videos. And you and your teachers can come together and watch the video uh, early on in the week. And then together come up with uh, five questions that you might have for us about winter and the video that you just watched. And then the next week we'll join you and answer some of those questions. In order to send your questions to us, uh, the link is below to the form, so you can fill it out. Your teacher can send it to us, and, and then we'll know what questions you have from, from our videos. So I challenge you to go to Google Maps or, or onto the computer, and maybe you might have to ask an adult at home to help you. Uh, find where McSkimming is in the east end of the city, and where the Bill Mason Center is in the west end of the city and then find where you live and uh, that way you know when we're joining you where we're joining you from and then if you find where you live I want you to see if you can find on the map a green space so usually all of the nature places on the map are a green color and so you can find a place near you uh, where nature is close so maybe you have a park or a ravine or uh, maybe you have some nature trails near you that you didn't even know about. So when you find that on the map, then you'll know when we're talking about going out and exploring and making observations, you'll know where maybe uh, you can go. I have a challenge for you too, and that is to get outside in your neighborhood and start to really think about winter. Think about what it takes to survive in these conditions here in Ottawa. And as you are making observations, as you're looking around, start to really look, look closely and notice those things that allow the plants and animals to, to survive these changing seasons that are all around us. I think you'll be amazed at some of the things that you find. Um, and I know Lindsay's gonna talk about ways to, to record that and share it with us. I would love to hear what you're discovering. We're gonna explore more about this in the future in, in the coming weeks. So I look forward to seeing you guys back here. Have fun exploring your neighborhood and uh, take care until then. Thanks. So, so I have a challenge for you this upcoming week and that would be to start working on your observation skills. So get outside, even just outside your front doorstep um, and maybe sit in a quiet place with no or minimal distractions and just start paying attention to what's around you. Um, start exploring your senses. So what are you smelling? What are you seeing? What are you hearing? Um, maybe close your eyes and see what you hear in that moment. 
um, and then also be uh, find a way to start recording those observations. So uh, you could pull some scrap paper out of your recycling bin and use the blank side if you like. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. Uh, if you have a notebook laying around at home too, uh, feel free to use that and just record some of your observations. You can do that in writing, uh, in a poem, you can explore writing music, or maybe you want to sketch or draw uh, some of the things that you've been observing and feeling while you're outdoors. So my challenge to you is to go for a walk in your neighborhood. Keep your eyes and ears open for sounds of birds. Can you hear them? Sometimes we can try to figure out what birds are making what sounds. If you stand really still when there's birds around, sometimes you can see different colors on them as well. Can you identify those different birds? How many birds can you find this week? That's your challenge. Well, thanks for tuning in today, guys. Uh, and there you have four challenges for you to work on over the next couple of weeks. Remember in two weeks, so on February 1st, we will launch the next video and our focus on that time will be on some amazing winter adaptations. Um, so again, we hope to see you back here. Remember, use your communication through your teachers to get any questions you have to us or any comments you want to make. Uh, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.